Hello everyone, this is Pal Pondera Weather coming at you with another update. In this update, we're going to be talking about some potent storm systems that will bring snow, severe weather, flooding, Arctic air, and yes, a potential snowstorm for the Northeast. So before I do get started, if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media. All right, so we, let's get started. We got a lot to talk about over the next seven days. It's going to be busy, guys. Here's the latest uh, weather map as of this morning, March the 22nd. And we had, had snow flying uh, overnight in Denver again into the Rockies where they've got those uh, winter weather advisories uh, taking place right now into Colorado as well as uh, getting into uh, New Mexico where they're going to be see seeing some snow uh, later on. And then we also have red flag warnings out in West Texas currently where the humidity is very dry and we could be seeing a fire danger uh, out there. So let's let's get right to the latest of the latest uh, surface map and how all this is going to play out over the next seven days. Like I said, we got a lot to talk about. Here's that developing storm system. Here's the first initial storm system. That'll keep diving down into the southeast. That'll bring the snow a little bit closer into uh, southeastern parts of uh, Colorado, get, getting into portions of uh, Kansas here. And that low pressure will dive down into the panhandle of Texas, and that'll set the stage uh, for possibly a severe weather threat over Kansas. Uh, uh, Oklahoma into portions of the Dallas Worth area uh, later on today with some some very uh, heavy rain. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has actually upgraded from yesterday to a slight risk for severe weather and all three modes could take place from you know it's basically a hell threat, it's a wind threat, but there is a possibility of an isolated tornado threat right along here by the Red River into Wichita Falls and south of southern portions of uh, Oklahoma uh, later on this evening. So we're talking like six o'clock between midnight time frame. So definitely uh, be on the lookout for that in and around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Fort Worth, Arlington, Plano, Garland area. And then we have that little, little bit slighter risk into uh, a, a more of a marginal risk into Oklahoma City, uh, getting into Waco, uh, Abilene, as well as uh, Norman, Oklahoma. So that comes uh, tonight. So as we get through the overnight, that same low pressure will continue moving off into the northeast. That'll bring some heavier rains into portions of Kansas, getting into Nebraska, extending all the way down into Missouri and Arkansas, especially as we get into uh, Louisiana and import south portions of Texas here into uh, Houston. And then on the back side, yes, we have more snow flying into uh, Idaho and Wyoming, Nevada, here in uh, Utah as well. So as we take a look at uh, Wednesday, it has that same system will continue moving off into the northeast. That'll tap into some a little bit colder air from the north and that'll transition to a little bit snow into Minnesota as we're getting to the extreme portions of uh, southeastern Canada, but we take a look at our second system, which is going to be even stronger than this one initially uh, going on right now. That'll bring, bring in some more snow into Colorado. That'll set the stage for your snowstorm into New Mexico, places like Albuquerque, places like Santa Fe is going to be seeing some snow. And yes, Amarillo, Texas, more snow for you guys in the Texas panhandle. As yet, this other system kind of gets its act together and will bring in more rain back into the picture into portions of uh, Texas uh, then, and then out uh, each to the east. Yeah, some heavier rains this week into Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, getting into Georgia as that first system lifts off into the northeast, into the mid-Atlantic states with some more rain uh, for you guys. But let's take a look at the temperatures by Wednesday. Here's your morning lows. Here's where the cold air is initially out west. That's where the troughs are going to be digging in, not just one, but two uh, potent storm systems that are going to be crossing from uh, west to east throughout the week. Uh, the first one's back behind it. Yeah, they got some pretty cold hair, and that'll be even below, you know, below freezing temperatures. So everywhere, everywhere in blue here, these are your below freezing uh, temperatures. And out ahead of it, we've got that warm surge. We're going to be really, uh, you know, these dew points are going to be increasing. Uh, the, the, the instability is going to be increasing. The heavier rains are going to be increasing. So where they have that tap into that Gulf moisture, yeah, that'll set the stage for a potentially uh, severe weather threat as we go deeper into the week. And as we get into Wednesday, yeah, the Storm Prediction Center 
already has a marginal risk, but I would imagine this will be upgraded to a slight risk at least uh, for getting into Wednesday. So we're talking portions of uh, Houston, getting into New Orleans, uh, Baton Rouge and Shreveport. Jackson, Meridian. I mean, not only are you going to be able to deal with uh, uh, severe weather this week, but a lot of flooding. I mean, New Orleans is going to get nailed this week with an, a, a lot of flooding rain. So that's definitely a concern, especially for them in the low lying areas uh, that they're already uh, under right now. So as we go into the day on a Thursday morning, yeah, that same system will continue moving across into the west. That'll really get, to, get its act together, dumping some more rain into Texas. Yeah, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, this, these places are going to be under the gun uh, this week. Some very heavy rain, and unfortunately, that severe weather threat. But as that first system moves up into the northeast, and look at the 1090, 1035 Arctic eye pressure diving down from the north. This is on the 25th. That'll tap into some, some colder air. So we're talking extreme portions of, uh, you know... Uh, Wisconsin getting into upper Michigan here with some heavier snows and then you know getting into the southeastern portions of uh, Canada as this goes through the day on a Thursday and like I said they have already highlighted this is day four out so this is probably going to be even be upgraded from what we're looking at now so this is the potential for that severe threat on uh, day four, which is Thursday, from Houston to Mobile uh, to pay possibly Memphis, getting into Little Rock. All these areas are going to be under the gun for that, uh, not only a very heavy rainfall, but also that severe threat with all three modes taking place. So it could be another active day for the southeast coming up on uh, Thursday. So definitely have your weather radios uh, handy, not only for that flood threat, but man, we got that severe threat as well. So definitely a lot of uh, high potential of a weather impacts for that region on Thursday because you can definitely see the temperatures that they're going to be dealing with uh, on come even Thursday morning. I mean, it's already 70 degrees in portions of Louisiana and that's your low. So yeah, as you can definitely tell out ahead of it, they're going to have a, a, a lot of warm air to work with. And so that's going to be able to tap into this, these, these in, this energy source as it moves in from the west and it just taps in so, this, so your cape values are going to go up your instability is going to go up so yeah the flooding rain the 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 the, the percentage of that but the, the the like i said the cape values are go up so yeah this whole area will be under the gun for that severe weather and then of course the back side yeah that's where your colder air will, will pull in and you know 38 in west texas and 40 in central texas so there's definitely some colder air uh back behind uh these systems so as we get into the day on a Thursday, like I mentioned, that same system will continue moving across. That'll be setting the stage for heavier rains into the southeast, getting into uh, Tennessee, portions of uh, Kentucky. That'll extend even into uh, Illinois and Indiana with some rain in, uh, into Ohio, getting into portions of uh, West Virginia. As that first system moves in, southern, southeastern portions of Canada, we'll see some snow. And then, yeah, we take our, take our look for yet another system diving in from the northwest with that heavier snows continuing to inundate uh, the Pacific Northwest into Idaho, into Wyoming, get into portions of Utah again, and especially as we get into the Rockies. So they're going to be making up their snow deficits in a big way into Colorado. Um, they've already seen a lot of snow, and there's still a lot more snow coming as we get into the day on Friday, so this is Friday morning. So that same low will continue uh, pushing off into the northeast. That'll create to your your rain into uh, into portions of the Ohio Valley uh, as well as uh, Pennsylvania, New York, and this will extend into the to the southeastern uh, Canada. You can take a look at your low temperatures by Friday. Out ahead of that first system, yeah, we got a lot of warm air to still tap into to the southeast. This is your Friday, the uh, March the twenty sixth. Uh, so we're talking almost 70 degree low temperatures and yeah back behind it it feels really nice with that chillier air uh, pushing in but look what happens to the north here look where the arctic air is i mean these are below zero temperatures in canada and that will start to slowly uh, shift southward as we go into uh, the weekend so let's take a look at the temp so the the, uh, the rainfall just over the next 
uh, between now and Friday. So like I mentioned, places like New Orleans could be picking up like eight inches of rain. I mean, Mobile, Alabama, possibly four to six inches. So we're talking a good swath of uh uh, four to eight inches of rain so definitely flooding concerns are definitely a potential down here into uh, southern portions of louisiana southern portions of uh, mississippi getting into alabama so this is a huge concern on top of the severe threat and even into dallas I and mean, we're talking a little bit two to three inches with these two systems on monday and wednesday so some actually some much needed rain into portions of texas where they have been a little bit drier and then as you get into Arkansas, possibly one to two inches, a little bit heavier amounts as you get into Missouri, into uh, Illinois with uh, two to three inches. So definitely some a uh, lot of rain uh, on the table, even between uh, your work week. So as we get out of the work week and go into the weekend, like I mentioned, we do have some Arctic air starting to penetrate from the, from the Canada, and that will impact uh, portions of the Northeast. So as that same system lifts up from the South, That'll tap into some of that colder air and make that transition into portions of uh, Michigan and extreme portions of the Northeast getting into Maine. We could see that transition into some snow uh, by then as we go into the overnight on Friday, getting into uh, Saturday morning. And as we get deeper into the day on uh, Saturday morning, yeah, that colder air will continue pressing from the south. We could see some changeovers in the extreme portions of uh, Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, getting into Maine with some heavier snows, especially like Caribou, Maine by then, southeastern Canada. Uh, so that could be setting the stage for a little bit heavier snows uh, by then. And as like I mentioned, as we get into the day on, on Sunday, that colder air will continue uh, to press south. I mean, this is a 1039 Arctic high pressure. This is definitely some colder air uh, for this time of the year for late March. So technically this is spring. So we'll start to see that little bit of a transition uh, from rain, and mainly in the Mid-Atlantic and the Ohio Valley to a portions uh, some snow uh, by then. I think as the colder air continues uh, to press, I mean, this is what we're working with by the 29th. This is could, you know, a week away, but you can definitely see the temperatures anywhere in red or is going to be below below freezing so i mean even these portions of uh, pennsylvania getting into Nor new york and a lot of the a lot of the northeast is going to be in, in, in and around freezing by then so definitely you start could see in a changeover to uh to some snow so let me kind of zoom you into as we get into monday like i mentioned as that colder air continues to press southward into the northeast Look at the blue lines. Look where this Arctic, Arctic air uh, extends into the Ohio Valley. And this will get into portions of the southeast as uh, well. And uh, into the northeast, you could see some changeover by then into portions of Ohio, getting into West Virginia, uh, getting into New York. And look at this low pressure setting up off the, off the coast of the northeast. This is a 993 uh, low pressure system uh, by then as some colder air continues to press uh, southward. And as we zoom in, I mean, if this takes place, I mean, it drops down to a 986 um, low pressure system. So yeah, we could really be making that change over to some some snow and the portions of the northeast so this definitely has the potential there's going to be some cold air around as long as this system stays offshore there's definitely that potential for a snowstorm uh, by then uh, for the northeast going in going into maine and like i mentioned as we continue the day getting into the overnight on monday going into tuesday the 30th this low pressure drops to a 978 so that's some that's some pretty serious stuff for the late March getting into almost April here. And yeah, you can definitely see by then taking advantage of the nighttime temperatures and it's all about timing, right? Uh, yeah, with this, this could be setting the stage for a heavy transition to all snow right along the I-95 corridor as this lifts off uh, to the northeast. And like I mentioned, as we go into the overnight on Monday, getting into Tuesday, this only continues to intensify 977 so yeah i mean we could see a 20 millibar drop possibly over that you know 24 to 36 hour time frame so well, this is a potential actually nor'eastern uh that's on the table uh potentially as uh, as all this ends on the backside going towards the end of, end of the month as we tap into some of that arctic air 
Um, so, and then, like I said, all that, all that will transfer to all snow into the Northeast as we get into the overnight on Monday, going into Tuesday morning, this will finally uh, lift out. But yeah, Tuesday morning, all these areas are pretty much at or below freezing. So a lot of this will actually fall as uh, snow, as long as this, this low pressure system will stay off the coast of uh, New England. And so we got a lot of time to track this system. But yeah, a lot going on uh, this week and in the weather department. So look, take a look at the overall uh, precipitation just in the next seven to eight days. Yeah, the southeast is inundated with flooding. So I'm greatly concerned about this area down here in the New Orleans and southern portions of Mississippi and Alabama of a significant flood threat later on this week, as well as the as well as a severe threat. But look what we're working with here. Even in the northeast are these amounts of two to three inches of rain, or at least precipitation that's available in the atmosphere and along the along the Pacific Northwest. There's your there's your heavier rains out there, but very dry out of here in California and of the desert southwest, and then extending into Texas, some definitely some much needed rain. So let's take a look at the snow. I mean, a lot of the heavier snows are gonna be falling in. For the Pacific Northwest, that's where the systems are going to be coming from this week with actually two uh, very strong systems. That'll be dumping some heavier snows into all these places in the Pacific Northwest, into Idaho, into Utah, into, 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 into Wyoming here, into Colorado. I mean, like I mentioned, Denver is going to be picking up. The, you're, you, mean, you could be ending with your almost your snowiest march on record as the, if this keeps up that's potentially on the table for at least another week of snow for you guys. And like I mentioned, as this continues to lift off into the Northeast and it taps into that colder air, the 29th and 30th time frame, yeah, we could be setting the stage for a potential uh, nor'eastern and some snow in, into portions of the Northeast right along the I-95 corridor and especially as we get into Maine by then. So I know we had a lot to cover today. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. So do like this video. Definitely share with your friends on uh, social media to get the word out. And I appreciate you guys watching. Do subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications as you get my latest update where I do it daily. So uh, thanks for watching where I protect you before, then, after the storm.